Batman Superman issue six. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is the first thing I read this week just because I wanted to know, you know, going forward, what, what's this? Because uh, we know where it was going based off of solicits. Mm-hmm. So I want to know if this is where those seeds get going. Um, and, and, and it does by the end. Yeah. Um, but no, this was, this was a solid. I like how they have to go get Wonder Woman and, and let her know. And she's definitely not happy. Yeah, and they realize uh, just, just that... for the record before we go further, uh, Joshua yeah. Wilson writing with David Marquez oh. uh, on the on the oh, art. Uh, but the yeah, art... It, it ties into uh, Supergirl as well, of course, because you know yeah. Wonder Woman showed up in that at the behest of yep. Batman Superman, and she's pissed at them. You two have been keeping yeah. your secrets. You you let a lot of this happen. You could have came and got help, but you didn't. Yep. Um, so I like well, that stuff. It, you know what it reminds me of is right before Infinite Crisis when all the heroes are on. Mm. You know mm. that basically Alexander Luther. The way that that John spins it was. Luther had done such a good, or Alexander Luther had done such a good job at isolating them all that they, you know, by the time they figured out what was happening, it would be too late, you know. Uh, and and I feel that's kind of what's happening here, and that's part of the Batman Who Laughs plan, is you know, let them keep having their secrets, and the more secrets they have, the more you know splintered they're going to be. And I love that Wonder Woman's own point points it out. No, what do you? It's what we're here for. Right, I'm we're going through this shit again. <laughs> yeah, like stop. Yeah, and, I, 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 and one of my favorite. I like moments, that a lot. Yeah, one of my favorite moments here is, uh, you know, when she's asking them questions, as she's still fighting all these monsters that they've, you know, they've, yeah. they've caught her doing. Uh, you know, she she shouts out, "Is there a cure?" Because this is right after she's brought up Donna, because Donna's one of the infected, right. and she yells yeah. out, "Is there a cure?" As she does this sort of ground pound thing to like, you know, blast all the monsters away, yeah. and you can just you can feel the anger as she's like mid fight, like she's taking her frustration yeah. out on these monsters. These, I mean, the monsters were dangerous. Don't get me wrong, but these poor unsuspected monsters look, did not expect well, what they, they were like getting. They're made out of clay. It's almost like this is for danger room. Yeah, I can see like, that. Right, mm-hmm. and uh, one of one of them's a chimera because you got it's got a snake tail and a lion body, um, and one of them's a Medusa. Uh, the one looks like a kind of a Minotaur type thing, right? Am I remembering that right? Um, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, it's almost like you're a training simulation. Yeah, uh, but no, our, yeah, they basically sort of take her advice and go off and do their own thing for a little bit. Batman yep. fights Scarecrow, Superman's fighting. Yep. Metallo. 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 Was that Metallo? Is that what Metallo's like now? So. Okay, fair enough. And he's, uh, he's, got, he's got the yeah. human face on the robot body. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Jim Corman. That was a great two page spread, or sorry, one page spread of uh, Batman and Superman. Okay. Like, it's like it's just drawn as if they're in the same place, but it's actually they're yeah. in different places, and like the, the villain in the ground is like half Scarecrow, half Metallo, and they're standing yeah. over him. And you've got the different backgrounds behind them with the cities yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 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 Just... Wherever Clark is. Sure, cool. that, that's Gorgeous. not a city. Yeah, uh, but then they sort of meet up afterwards, and uh, this this is where he mentions you know he's wearing the glasses, even though everyone knows who he is. And I, I'm pretty sure that is just for the sake of the fact that ninety percent of artists would struggle to differentiate the the two of them True. if they didn't have I, the glasses. I, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, but I feel like, but Marquez is such a good artist, no. and I feel like he'd have his. Yeah, no. Yeah. Marquez could clearly pull it off. Um, yeah. I, I think it's more just a hey, if we're doing them in the same book maybe keep the glasses just to keep it clear for the readers what i liked uh about this is that they meet over the the place where uh, batman who laughs cave was and you know whatever yeah. was this gotham or trough i can't remember what city this was in that, that's that's gotham because that's, that's yeah. crane alley yeah, yeah. uh oh, quite right that's yeah the theater but they're you know it's underneath that and the, you know we're, we're seeing them sort of like you know the construction workers are pulling things out of it and i kind of i kind of like seeing this this place again but with the, the daylight kind of pouring into it. It, it give it this kind of interesting like you know the whole shining a light on the, the stuff that's hidden it's, kind yeah, of vibe how, how often do you yeah. see crime alley so, in daylight exactly yeah no, just, well yeah because there's a saying that that you know shining a light sanitizes things hell actually it's right? a, to add to that point, how often do we see Gotham City in daylight? Not that often. No. I mean, it's... not super often, but I, I am think of times. I can't actually ever recall. Oh sure, no, I'm not saying Crime Alley. I'm not life. saying never. I'm just saying like, like we see them standing in the street in the daylight, and it's again, it's this idea of we're in the daylight, you know, shining a light on something. So it, it's good. I just realized that Gotham City always is covered with a storm, much like uh, Skull Island. It's just got like, a <laughs> constant storm over it, so it's always overcast. Does that mean uh, Batman Kong in this analogy? <laughs> A little, I guess. Yeah, he's the protector. No. I can see that. I can see that making sense. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then, so that catches up where so that now they've teamed up again to go talk to Gordon because that the Gordon conversation actually was you know set further ahead and we come back yeah. to it at the end. Um, yeah. So and he's all you know monologuing and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and then the end of the book actually teases uh, two other characters who have not been in the book yet. 
uh, oh. two villains teaming up. Mm. We have Zod and Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Facial hair game on lock. Yeah, I know, two. between the pair of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also look yeah. fantastic. Our art in this book has been uh, so solid. I think... The weird, the weird thing about this book is that it's so tied into setting up this, uh, you know, Hell Arisen stuff, Arisen. and that ties into Supergirl that it does feel a little bit held back by all the things that it seems like it's setting up. Um, I kind of like that once it, you know, after the Wonder Woman meeting, it kind of felt like it became its own thing again, even though it's still tying into all that stuff. It felt like, okay, we're actually going to explore Batman and Superman and how they feel about all this stuff, because mm-hmm. up until that point, and to an extent in the last couple of issues, felt like, no, this, this, these are here to set up the crossover stuff uh yeah so that that's been the main thing even though i think it's been really solidly written the entire time the one thing that's been kind of dragging it down a little bit is just the it's kind of exists to set up other things as opposed to just be its yeah, own story it's, uh, yeah it's, it's happened it, like the whole time i feel like it feels a bit mundane and it's just being raised by great art uh, a mm-hmm. lot of the time uh, yeah no that, that's very fair um you know it, it feels like it's a it's a cog in the in like the the greater clockwork of what's going on that's why i'm excited for where it's gonna go Mm. once you introduce the raz and zod connection that uh see where this goes yeah because because raz raz and zod i think are going to be this book's own thing well this is not going to be something that's doing with the other stuff so i'm happy about that uh if this is a cog in the wheel though it's one of the better cogs in the wheel that we've had and largely that may be because of the art but um you know i enjoyed the issue i I, you know i was into it um as, as far as you know issues that are just there to service the universe go i thought it was a pretty solid one even if it's yeah. not an amazing thing on its own so uh excited to see uh what Williamson keeps doing it's nice to be excited for a Williamson book because the other one he's doing in rocky mm-hmm. wars yes. matt what are you uh giving <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give us an eight cool connor um i was gonna give it a six but i'm gonna give it a seven just looking at the art again okay I'm going to give it... I kind of want to give it the 8, but I'm going to go with 7.5. I, I just I don't think it stands alone enough for me to give it that. Uh, but fully, really good stuff.